Okay, we're up here, I think. Six things all happening at the same time here, sorry. Somebody's trying to make a booking here, having trouble. Uh, they're having trouble making a booking, just a minute. <laughs> Okay, I got you. I just, I'm just i going to have to be checking mail here back and forth the next few minutes. Someone's trying to make a booking for the 10 o'clock party this morning. They had trouble with the web form, and it seems okay. I may have to do what they're, they're fixing. Okay, what's happening this morning? A few things. At all. First up, I do have some pictures from downstairs. Please remind me later on. I don't know if I forget to show you. I've got a few. Not a, a whole lot, but a few. And we've got a couple of extra jobs that have come running in this morning. We're going to be doing more carving this morning on the, on the key block, the mini wave. But before that, I've got to fix some of the blocks for the loot subscription print for next month. Ishikawa-san started printing it yesterday. She ran into a problem. The registration marks are actually somehow in the wrong place. And she's asked me to, to fix them. I'm not quite sure what's going on. It's curious, we've made this print in a normal way, but the color blocks all have the registration mark about three or four millimeters in the wrong place. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but so we have to move them back a few millimeters. So. so what she did was, I know she was printing, I don't, know, I don't have a piece of paper here, whatever. What she, what she did was, <coughs> when she first printed it in the registration marks here, the color was off by about three or four millimeters. So she just tried by hand. She moved her paper back by hand, what she thought would be a good idea, printed it. It seemed okay. So what she did next was she took a pen and just draw through what she thought was the new location, or the proper location for the registration marks. But it was just a little bit of a rough, so we don't know. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting new marks just inside her penciled line. And when she gets here this morning, she'll try printing in this new mark, and it'll probably need a tiny sliver of adjustment at that point. Um, I think I know how this happened. And on this particular set of color blocks, we didn't trace from the key block. We just took Jed's Photoshop file and just sent it directly to Kawasaki-san. I know there's no way we could have redrawn it. He did the colors on this one totally with no real reference to the outlines. They're, they're quite, what's the word, roughly colored in a sense of more splash color. So we used his Photoshop Master for the color guides and it didn't line up. Wait, do we have a, a chat running here? I can't really look at both while I'm doing this. Good morning, good morning, everybody. What's this? Talking about Oxid. So you're looking at yesterday's, yesterday's chat, yes. Don't get me interested in it again. I don't have any time for that these days. Switch resetting, reloading. We're okay at this end. Everything looks good. Okay, I'll get back to my carving. You guys can uh, see what's happening there. The shop, the last couple of days, yesterday. <laughs> I haven't actually had time to do all the uh, bookkeeping from yesterday yet, but it's possible yesterday was our busiest day ever. I'm not quite sure. If not the actual busiest day ever, very, very close to it. When I say busiest, I mean everything, you know. Parties happening, people in the shop, and of course the, the total at the cash register, you know. I have no idea how many dozens and dozens of prints left here yesterday. Heroes prints, Hunger Club prints, old classics, just all kinds of stuff. At this rate, we're going to run out of everything any minute now. And downstairs is not even open yet. We were just exhausted yesterday by the end of the day, you know. It was me, Teiko-san, and the new face, Koizumi-san.
And to a large extent, you know, part of this is organic growth, and part of it is the new sign downstairs. It has, it's going to turn to transform our business. I've got some photos of it. When I, when I show you the pictures later on for the downstairs construction, I've got some photos of the new signage outside. And it's going to transform our business, you know. That's one done, I got three more before we get to the real work of the day. Oh, Jed signed in, has he? Jed signed in. I don't know how many heroes left yesterday. I didn't have time to count so far. Three, four, five, or six, I don't know. Five or six, I think. The giant poster jed henry designed posters that are downstairs are just sucking people in like magnets yeah let's show the picture why not let's do that now <laughs> this is not so interesting let's look at the pictures from downstairs Are we going to test registration? Yeah, of course. We always test registration. We've got a bunch of sample. We, you know, we don't waste good washi when there's a registration problem. This registration has become strange. I'm recutting them now. They'll go to Ishikawa-san upstairs later this morning. And she will use, of course, just rough copy paper, unmoistened. She'll print it on the key block, then quickly put it here, print it on the color block. We don't waste good washi when we're messing around with registration tests. Did we sell lots of non -jet? Yeah, I told you. Just dozens and dozens and dozens of prints. Everything. Jed Sands, Heroes, a couple of new subscriptions, flea market stuff. Just all over the place. It's a real scramble day. Let me show you some of these pictures from downstairs. Where would I press the button? Hang on a sec. Are we okay? Here we go. Okay. This is from a, a, a week or so ago. I don't know. Taken at night. The, the place to look at here, you can see the entrance to the shop. And the shutter is partly open. On the right-hand side, there's a bare wooden panel. It's just a piece of wood. This is, uh, there had been a, that's one of the pillars that holds the building up. And if you look on the left-hand side, you see a mailbox there. That's one of the other pillars of the building, the actual structural members. So the staircase squeezes inside that pillar. Then on the right-hand side, unfortunately, in the way of the front door, there's another pillar for the building can't be helped, whatever. There was a wooden box built around it years and years and years ago, but because of rain coming, pouring into the front of this building on a windy day, the front surface of that wooden box had become rotten. I forgot to take a picture of it before I put it off, but it was just a piece of rotten wood. So I ripped it off and got a piece of new wood ready. And what you see here at the moment is just before I was gonna screw that new panel in. And the reason it's worth taking a picture of is because what I found when I took off the rotten wood was, I don't know if you can see it in there, there's a bit of funny old framing there, and there's a bit of metal showing, there's an actual tap. There's a tap in there. And when the building was built, and most Japanese buildings are like this, people have to be cleaning the streets in front of their building. It's your own responsibility to wash the sidewalks and wash the streets. And when this building was built, there it is. There's the outside tap. You know, maybe a, a rural area, they've got it in the back garden so you can water your lawn. But in an urban environment like Japan, every building needs water supply outside on the front. At some point along the line, somebody had just said, screw this, let's just board it up and cover it up. 
And we've actually had a real problem. We have to do the cleaning on the streets. Every first Tuesday of every month is cleaning day. And because we have no tap, we've had to do a bucket brigade. We've gone and get buckets from some of the neighbors to bring water back. So bingo, it turns out we do have a tap. So of course, I wanna put a big, huge poster up in this area, but what am I gonna do? There's a tap there. So what I did was in the new panel, I cut an access hole, got some, I better check it out. I think that's the 10 o'clock reservation. Hang on a sec. Excuse me a minute. This is one of those days. Hold to me. This is one of those days. I know it's for an afternoon. There was a group of people who were trying to have, who were having difficulty getting a 10 o'clock reservation. That's not them. Okay. Nothing I can do. All right. Sorry to interrupt, guys. Where are we? Okay. Back here, uh, what have I done now? It's jumped. Where are we? Here we are. I must have been playing by itself while I wasn't here. Sorry about that. Anyway, okay, so we've built an access panel to this. Okay, next step. Now that the wall is back to normal, here we go. Up goes a giant Ukiwe Heroes poster. And we had it printed. There's lots of companies now doing this. They print stuff on, on canvas. It's like the, for the outside of department stores and stuff like this. They'll print huge, 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 like 10 meter high stuff, whatever. So we got one that was two and a half meters high. And of course, we want an, an image with impact. Now, we can't put it flat on the wall because that pillar, the construction pillar, is still in the way. But there's nothing we can do about that. And while I was hanging it up and nonstop from that moment to now, people stopped. They come down the sidewalk. It doesn't stop everybody in their tracks, but I don't know, out of 100 people, 20 people or whatever, it just stops them right in their tracks. They look at it, they look at each other, they start talking, they pull out their camera, and bang. A few minutes later, Instagram. <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to be that big. You can see on the, on the top of the picture is a white space, and I should have put in there, hi, Instagram corner, please go ahead. So we're going to put some signage up for that. Stepping back from the building a bit, there's our new sign up top, which has been lowered down now, so it's much more visible from the street. One of the flag banners you can see, and that's what our entrance, one side of it, is going to look like. Then, uh, let's see, where are we? What have I got? Oh, that's another picture of the same thing. Yeah, there you are. When you walk down the street, when you walk in on the sidewalk, this is what you see. In the far distance there, it's the Don Quixote building. And bang, right in your face. <laughs> it paid for itself the first day. It didn't take a couple of weeks. The very first day, the while I was still hanging it, before we had it even got stretched, while I was still hanging it, we sold three of that print. It paid for itself the very first day. And already, we had just received a batch of new rickshaw cart prints from the printer. I sent the blocks back to Kabodasan. And right now, as we speak, Kabodasan is printing these again. And this is going to be a problem. We're going to be in the same situation with this print as we are with the Great Wave print. We won't be able to print them fast enough because we don't have printers and because we can't wear out the blocks. We've got to do the blocks 50, 60 copies at a time and let the blocks sit for a couple of weeks. If we abuse them, we're dead. So this is going to be a waiting list from now on, I think. We've got a batch printed right now. And I should talk to Jed about this because we've got to be careful with this. Our most popular print is going to be moving to a waiting list. Raise the prices, no, not even think about it. Okay, that's one side of the entrance. On the other side, here we go. It's our second most popular print, or well, number two we did in the Nuclear Hero series. And if Jed's looking at this now, are you still here, Jed? Yeah. Do you recognize something different about the Fox Moon design here? <laughs> there's the design. This is flatter because there's no post, there's no pillar in the wall. So this one gets this day flat. Of course we did, Jed. Of course we did. So I double flipped it. I flipped the image all of a sudden, flipped horizontally, and then I had to go back and flip the kanji because we didn't, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, we can't have the kanji flip backwards. And it's really a brain flip for me to see this. For five years, I've been seeing this print on a daily basis, one way around, and now here it is the other way. And we, we were thinking about doing it the normal way so that it would bring people into the shop. Here's the fox charge into the shop. But it really didn't make any sense. I think you want to go right over left. Like, that makes any difference. <laughs> Jed gets most of them wrong anyway when we do those things. Okay, what else have we got here? I think we're going inside with the next picture here. 
Someone's asking to print, order the prints to Finland. Yes, the, these prints, you got to go to Jed's website. Go to ukiyoeheroes.com. Somebody can post a link or Jed can post a link. Wall one word, ukiyoeheroes.com is Jed's website. He ships these things all over the world. <laughs> okay, let's go inside the shop. All right, it's still absolute freaking chaos. It's still absolute chaos. I know a lot of work has been done, but it's not visible in a photograph like this. This is, looks like the same photograph from, from six weeks ago or something. On the right-hand side is where the prints will go in the browser bins, and the browser bin structure is just as it was when they were left a couple of months ago. We haven't worked on those yet. But the shell is done, the roof is done, the lighting has all been moved to the new locations, the left-hand wall is plastered, the counter is going to go there. The reason I'm showing you this photo now is at the back left, the bathroom is now totally finished. We can't see it here. And Aoyama and I have been working on the back room. And let's go a bit closer and have a look at this back room, which is going to be the party room. Okay, you can see a couple of things here. This is where the party bench is going to go. There's a, that white tile stuff is left from when this is going to be a kitchen, and that's going to be covered up with furniture. It'll be under the party bench. The party bench will cover those white tiles, and what you see on the wall is where there will be cork board with the samples of the print party print that you see. And the reason I show this, look at the ceiling. I guess maybe we can see it. Here we are. The original ceiling is some kind of funky asbestos uh, burn-proof tile from when it was a, a kitchen, and we can't touch that. We can't take it out because it's too hazardous, and we can't hang a new ceiling because we would have to go through the asbestos hung ceiling to get to the concrete. We can't touch that stuff. It's absolutely impossible to touch it. Now, it's not dangerous as it is, but we can't start drilling it and mucking around and removing asbestos panels. It's just not possible. So what we're doing is we are burying it. Me and Aoyama-san, we've built a new structure here. This arch that you see, go back one, one picture, the arch is supported on the walls, the concrete wall at left and right, and it supports its own weight. So we don't need anything from the ceiling upstairs. We're just going to bury it and forget about it and leave it. And the people who eventually tear this building down sometime in the future will have to worry about it. That might be us. That might be somebody else. I don't know. We'll deal with that at that time. I cannot touch it now. And what we did is we took the wire. The wiring was all exposed, so we just ripped the wiring out of the old light fixtures, and I've pulled the wiring. Can you see it there? I'm not sure. Yeah, I just put new wiring behind our new ceiling frames. This was a few days ago. Also, you can see the back wall. Aoyama san has finished the cabinets that go on the back wall. You see a window there. You're not going to see that window once we're done. Moving along. Okay, here we are. The right-hand wall. This is where the customers will sit before their print party starts, and we've done our plastering. Our homemade plastering with, a, you know, that sort of, what do you call it? Fan-shaped, chip, 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 chip kind of thing. And here we are. There we are. And we did this on Tuesday. No, not Tuesday. What did we do? We did it on Thursday afternoon. We've put up these ceiling panels. These are stapled into place. And this is not the ceiling as it's going to be finished. There will be, what do you call it? Divider bars that look like beams. Yeah, and the ceiling includes the cabinets. It's okay. We have, we have no, no idea. We didn't want the ceiling to be flat. We wanted the ceiling to look nice. And it occludes the t end part of those cabinets, which are just used for long-term storage, like extra copies of print party paper, stuff like this. And this, the ceiling will have, it'll have, there will be a light bar in the middle here. We see that green line. There's going to be a two and a half meter long light bar strip that goes up there. And between each of these panels, there will be a dark brown and a highlight, uh, highlight stuff. And there, the shoji has now gone in. We haven't papered it yet. What you're seeing through the shoji screens are just the back wall, the back white wall and the window. So the shoji will be papered, of course. And below the shoji, you see that open crap space at the left. There will be a small sink there. This is where we wash the brushes and get their stuff ready for the print party. Then below the shoji at the right will be the cabinet for the coffee corner. The coffee machine will be there, and the, the snacks and stuff like that. So to recap, this is the print party room. On the left-hand side will be a 700 millimeter deep, four meter long wide wooden bench for the print people to do the printing. On the right-hand side will be the benches where people sit down while they're waiting for the party and drinking their coffee and stuff. And on the back wall will be a sink and a cabinet with the coffee machine and stuff like that. And the floor will be tatami. The floor will be tatami. We've got the tatami guy coming tomorrow, no, the day after tomorrow, Monday, to measure up and get tatami ready. And we are trying to figure out how we can do a light, a, a little light behind the shoji screen. But we're really, really tight for space there. We've got power up in the cabinets. 
And if we can swing it, what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of a soft light behind the shoji screens. But uh, it may or may not happen. It's not a high priority for us. I think that's the end of this little photo stream. We'll go back to the beginning. Yes, I think that's it. Let's run them again. Here we are. There's the entrance to the building as of a few weeks ago. The exposed tap. Covered up. Excuse me again. Let's have a look at this. Another party. Is this the 10 o'clock? It is indeed 10 o'clock group of five. We are now officially totally absolutely booked out for parties today. <laughs> every day, every day, every day. So there won't be any construction happening downstairs. Once we get open downstairs, of course, we're going to take that blue awning down. The awning you see here that's over the stairwell, it'll be just a confusing thing. So we'll be taking that down. And we still haven't decided, if I go back a frame, we still haven't decided whether to put a blue awning or something right across the whole thing. We don't want to you know, hide our barren banner up at the top, but we would like to get some rain protection from people walking down the street. So that's undecided yet. We'll, we'll think about what to do on that once we're up and running. There's our friend. You can see it. There's the blank wall area above the shutter. We've either got to need to paint something in there, or maybe that's where an awning will go. If you think about this blue awning being lifted a bit higher and made larger right across the whole space. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, someone's talking about LED strips. That was the idea. If I hide an LED strip inside the shoji, when you put shoji in, there's a slot at the top and bottom. It runs on the bottom slot and it goes up into the top slot. And I'm thinking of putting an LED strip hidden up in the top slot where the shoji runs. But I've got to get the shop open first. We, uh, you know. Slow week, not many tourists. Yeah, yeah, that's, I know. I don't tell me about it. So, <laughs> so a chibi print goes in the space. I don't know. We can't make it too much plastered, you know. I mean, this is Japan. There's going to have some restraint and stuff. I don't know. We'll see. It's taking so long, you know. We've also been asked, you know, why didn't we just hire people to do this? We've lost a bunch of money this way. You know, obviously, we, we've lost like three months' use of the shop down there. We've paid the rent for three months, but haven't got the shop open yet. So the guy down the street, Dave, just hire craftsmen, you know, hire a company. They could have built it in four or five or six days, and you could have been up and running for the past two months. We didn't have that kind of money. We just don't. I know we're doing okay. We're profitable. We're doing all right. We're selling lots of prints. But I can't afford, you know, two hundred thousand dollars that it would have cost to have a company do this for us. There's no handyman here in Japan. You can't hire a few friends with hammers to do stuff. It's either a multi-million dollar job or it's nothing. Anyway, have you down the jaunty toilet? I'm not sure what you what you're asking here, but whatever. The toilet's finished. I didn't show a picture of there because it's a toilet. Whatever. Any news on the shutter graphic? We are still working on it, and it's come to a bit of a me and the young lady in our staff here who have been working on it. Uh, I, I mentioned about it before. She wants to do an illustrator illustration, and I want uh, a photograph of something that doesn't exist. So I'm not quite so sure what we'll do. I don't know. I'm not quite so sure. It may be that I should just reach out to somebody else for Photoshop help. <laughs> Other things going on in that department too. Okay, look, I gotta get back to work here. I've gotta get this done. She's coming at 10 o'clock to start printing on this and I have to get this done before she comes. What time is it now? 8.24, we're okay. Uh, Cameron will not be uh, coming here this morning. It's weekend, Saturday, Sunday. He's off this weekend. He was off yesterday too, three days in a row. Oh boy, oh boy, it must be nice. Anyway. Here I am. For those of you who've just arrived, what we're doing this morning, I will be car in a few minutes, I will be carving again. Oops. I will be carving again on the Great Wave. <laughs> I will be carving again on the Great Wave print. But before I do that, I have to fix some registration marks in next month's subscription print because they're, they're carved in the wrong place by mistake. Okay. 
Are we visible? Should I sh zoom in a bit more? Whatever. I don't know. It just might get worse if I zoom in too far. There's registration marks carved here. They turned out to be in the wrong place. And luckily, the ones we need are back, not forward. So I'm going to hit them where I believe they should approximately be. She will do test printing this morning and then we'll make a final refinement as to where we think they should really go. And it was my screw up. I'm the one who got him in the wrong place when I sent the um, color block separations to Kawasaki Sam. So it was my screw up that uh, put him in the wrong place. two faces, two more faces here. She didn't draw it overly dark here. I barely see the line she gave me. Hmm, better be careful here. Well, there's other news. And Jet San, are you still there? If you're still there, um, Chon San was over yesterday afternoon. He came visiting. He brought with him the finished key block, the key block to the new Ukiwe Heroes print, Times Burned Bright. 
I don't know for those of the rest of you who, you know, we did the six new Ukiwe Heroes prints on the Kickstarter campaign last September, but we haven't stopped there. Production is underway on another one, which of an image that I really, really, really like. It's the image Jed calls Times Burned Bright. And if somebody can maybe post the link, it's on ukiweheroes.com, Jed's website. It's not there as a woodblock print yet. It's there as a jikle print, an inkjet print. Can you post, it? Can you post a link, Jed Sun? Times Burned Bright to the image? Anyway, the key block is done and it looks great. There's so many super fine lines. We're just like, he's just, wow. But we did it. We got it. The key block is done. And he and I sat down and worked out what we think is a, a color separation plan. Uh, a lot of it's based directly on what you did, of course, in Photoshop. And a lot of it we couldn't follow exactly what you did in Photoshop because you used some opaque colors there. But for the most part, we've, we followed what you're, you're asking for. And there are a lot of blocks in this one, but it is going to look cool. Have we got a link to it? No, that's a rickshaw cart. Or somebody's posted it wrong. I'm talking about the image that's called a Times Burned Bright. The URL doesn't look right, but it is. Wait, what? No idea. Jed will have to get involved here. If he's got the right uh, the right image with the wrong name on his website, no idea. Anyway, for the timetable, we're starting, Johnson is starting to work on the color blocks now. And that's going to be at least a month's work. Absolutely at least a month's work. And when that's done, we'll do some test printing. And I think I want to do the test printing on that one myself, if I can possibly swing the time. Yeah, they're talking about the color. Now, what we call, when there's colors that butt against each other with no black line inside, we call it kenuki awase. You have to get them the thickness of a human hair, you know. There's two things. If it's a dark color and a light color butting each other, then it's okay. You can run the light color underneath the dark color, so there's no registration problem. But when they're two incompatible colors butting against each other, then no, you have to just butt them and just uh, go for it. One of Jed's new prints in his Neo Tokyo series is full of this. It's uh, the view of the cityscape from the girl in the window. And it's almost totally without key block lines, except the part where the girl is. And it's staggeringly, stunningly difficult to do. This one, the Times Burn Bright, most of it is not so bad. If you've got the image there, you'll see, for example, 
the hero at the top left, he's surrounded by a bunch of shadowy, uh, you know, dark, gloomy stuff. And those are okay. Those are easy to do because it's a sequence. It's a cascade. Light getting darker, getting darker, getting darker. And you print the lightest one under the whole area. Then the next one in sequence under the whole area. Then the next one. You, you, you level it up. So there's no registration problems. Where you get the registration problems is in the places where below that top left hero there's a young girl and she's got lighter hair against a darker background and the hair is feathering out that's going to be a challenge there's many places on the print where the hair feathers out into the backgrounds those are always extremely difficult hmm, that corner's a bit of a mess Maybe okay. Am I on camera? I don't know. What am I doing here? Just one more to do, then we can get back to our... Oh wait, no, I've done it. That's it. We're done. Okay. Those are for Ishikawa-san. And me now, I can get back to my normal work for the day. Bunch of chaos this morning. Kenuki awase, it's not hair tweezers joined together. Nuku means to pull out. Now you, you've got one translation, but it's wrong. You've got a hair here. If you imagine two things that are together, and you would a hair to pull a hair between them. So kenuki awase, the distance of a human hair lined up together, is the concept. It's a, it's a printer's term, and when we see it, it's just, oh my God, just trouble, trouble, trouble. It means the carving, the carving, of course, has to be perfect. <coughs> and the printing, the paper moisture control, has to be perfect. Not too much burn pressure. You stretch the paper, you're in trouble. Let's get to work. My guts are a little bit... I was just rushed this morning doing email with somebody trying to fix a broken font that didn't work, whatever. All right, where am I? Where were we? Where did we leave off yesterday? Oh, that's right. We're up on the top arch of the, of the wave. We've finished all the dark blue places now. Now it's just uh, straight ahead work the next few days. Finishing off these curlicues. Let me try to get located here. Where am I? I left off right here yesterday. Let's zoom in. Somewhere on there. Can I get in a bit closer? Is that okay? Okay, now settle down, Dave. Get back to some peaceful, quiet work.
check in, see what's happening over here. Mini waves, microwaves, macrowaves. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> I guess this is a middling wave. No, it's not a great wave, it's a middling wave. Who knows? Among all the hordes of people who were here yesterday, there were some who had been here before, you know, a couple of guys. They had done the print party before with the, uh, you know, the little Peach Boy print we used for most of the beginning parties, you know. Yeah. They didn't know this was on my bench here, so we were chatting in the shop. And, uh, they're like, oh, they'd like to do a party again, but, you know, we don't want to do the same print, you know. So I said, well, uh, I can't have it ready for you just yet, but if you come back in a little while, I brought them in the carving room here and showed them, and they're like, just, oh my god. <laughs> the problem, once once we put this great wave into the party room, you know, people are going to make it, and assuming it works successfully, they're going to make it, and Instagram it, and Facebook it, and stuff, I guess. And nobody else is ever going to want to do anything else in the party room. Now, the original idea was we'd have sort of a bunch of seasonal images we'd change up now and then. And I had trouble getting production worked out, so we didn't really get many more party blocks prepared over the last couple of years. We've been just depending on that one, the original one. But once this goes into the party room, nobody else is going to want to do anything else. So I'm not quite sure if this is such a good idea, you know. Our print parties will, come, will become simply great wave parties. You know? And as this block wears out, we'll have to cut another one, and then another one, and then another one. And it's all very nice having a popular image. But if it comes to be the only thing you ever do, you know, that's not so good. So, so I don't know. Anyway, we're in for it now. We're going to go for it. We're going to try it. And I'm sure it'll be popular. But whether we'll ever be able to escape from it, I'm not quite sure. You know. See the end of this one, where's the hook? This line, it defines now the wave area and the sky area. So it's going to be a color break. In here will be white, blue wave stuff. Outside will be the sky area. And on the original print, this line wasn't actually quite so fat. It had nice brush taste, but it was a bit thin. Now we've scaled this down. 
And if we kept this line at the original thinness scale down, this would be just a hair width. But people are going to be in a print party room trying to get the sky printed in this zone and the wave printed here. So we've thickened this up a bit. Our staff member, Sexa, you know, she's been redrawing this for me. She took her brush and we've thickened it up a little bit. So this is not an actually scaled version, line by line, dot by dot, of the great wave. This is for beginners to print. And we've got to be careful about how delicate the work will be. So this line it will be thicker and bolder than it was on the original version. for time nearly nine o'clock I cannot be late this time because it's you know we're book parties and I'll be on partial party duty today it's Kawaii-san and Kitamura-san Kawaii-san's competent but his English is not so great Kitamura-san is much better English but she's not ready to lead a party yet so in those cases I have to step in because Kawaii-san although he's good at doing the parties and he's friendly and he's sociable with the people and he knows how to guide the printing his English is not confident enough to let him lead a difficult party. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Here we're just going to blah, 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 blah. He can't speak that confidently and strongly. So in this case, I have to step in. I have to start the party. I have to introduce things. I have to get things warmed up like an MC or something, warming it up. And then I have to do the first little bit of demonstration and get it all started. And then once people are at the bench printing, and it's less about the talking and more about the activity, then I can step back a bit and Kawaii-san and Kitamura-san will, will sort of take over. But for the first 10 minutes of the party where there's more explanations and stuff going on, that's when I'm needed because Kitamura-san is not experienced enough and Kawaii-san's English is not strong enough. This must be Suga-san, I think, right? We're almost at 9 o'clock. Cameron's not here today, so this must be Suga-san. And I did remember to take her paper out this morning. So there'll be no problem there. Oh, it's Ishikawa-san, not Suga-san. Suga-san, Who is this late, delicate, delicate Say hello. Did you ever hear the stream? It's this camera here, so. ちょっとね、ない、見えない。ごめんなさい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。
He just came back from two weeks holiday in Taiwan. So we don't have the exclusive, what's the word, the exclusive use of her. But when she's here, she's really good at it, at, at the prints that she's good at. She can't do the hero's prints, that Times Burn Bright print we looked at just now. She's not at, at that level of sophistication yet. But she's doing this year's subscription series very nicely, very tastefully. In fact, she's handling that job this year all by herself. She's the only one here at the moment working on the current subscription prints. They're being carved by Kawasaki-san in Kobe, our young Japanese carver who lives in Kobe. And they're all being printed by Ishikawa-san here. Next year, we'll see what happens. We'll work out a different setup for next year's series. This is a very hard piece of wood, and it's a little bit brittler, brittler than it should be because it's aged quite well. It's really quite old. Uh, we talked about this before, but the piece of wood I'm using right now, I scavenged it, I scrounged it. This is the one that was the back side of the key block that's been in our print party room for four years. Now, the little Peach Boy print we originally got, and this is years ago, five, six, seven years ago, we got a good key block for that really hard wood. But we, of course, only used one side of it. We, we carved one face of it. I know normally in our workshop here, we sometimes use both sides of the wood. The, the ones you just saw me do now for the lute series were carved on both sides. But in our print party room, because there's no time to flip wood over, up and down, up and down, we, we just use one side of it. So when we carved that Peach Boy print years ago, we had a nice two-sided key block, but we only used one face of it. So when I was searching for a piece of wood for this one, for the Great Wave print, I really couldn't come up with a good hard piece because it's become much more difficult to get good hard pieces. We're making our own wood blocks now, but nearly all the wood we found or turned up with so far is fairly soft and not good for key blocks. So I had the idea of just using that one. So we took the, key, the Peach Boy block, split it, just took the back side, just split it off glued it down onto a new piece of wood and that's what we're seeing this is the piece of wood that was used as the back side of that block it sat there on the bench being pummeled and banged and inked and, and dropped and, and whatever washed that's why it's so dark and stained you know normally these key blocks when i'm carving them they're quite light colored wood with the, the lines being incised this is dark and stained because it's been on the bench for five years, four years.
Yeah, sure. Lots of different hardnesses, you know. You know, in the old days when there were actual workshops where we could buy the wood, when we order it, the guy asks us, you know, what's it for? Is it for a color block? Is it for a key block? Whatever, you know. When we ordered what's called omohan, uh, the the main block, the key block, and it would be very, very hard wood. Sometimes extremely hard. But when we, if we tried to print colors from a piece of wood that's too hard, it doesn't work. We need more water absorption when we're doing color block printing. This is why these days a lot of people are using plywood for their color blocks, sheen of plywood, because it's so soft. It's very, very easy to print smooth color from a soft piece of wood to a point. Once the, the wood gets too saturated, then it doesn't print smooth color anymore. You get muddy, muddy color. We could never use sheen of plywood for our production runs here. That uh, no, rickshaw card print we talked about earlier that we've made now well over a thousand copies of. We couldn't dream of doing that on Sheena Plywood. The colors would have just turned to mud by now. But Sherry's just got that, just that best combination of hardness and water absorbability. The water goes in, the pigment goes in, and it comes back out when you rub the tool over the back of it. So it's just right for us. Feels the right balance between hardness and durability and moisture absorbability and all those different factors. There's something else I can maybe mention on the stream here. I don't have a visual image to show you at the moment, but there should be people who are maybe a bit concerned about it. It's been over a year now since we started our Patreon campaign. It's uh, We started it in April of, of uh, last year, and it's now May of this year. So we now actually have people who have been supporting that campaign for 12 months. And if you, those of you who know about it, there were different support levels people could support at what we call the chibi level. I don't remember the exact numbers, whatever. And if they do that, they get a couple of chibi prints each year, which we've been producing and are still producing and are doing well at producing. Then if you support it at the next level up, what we call the Nenga level, we send the chibi prints to you also, and we also send a New Year's card to these people. Then the top level of our campaign is what we call the share level, share in the fun level. And we promised these people that they would get the chibi prints, of course, same as everybody else, and they would get the New Year's card, same as everybody else, and they would get a share certificate. A share certificate meaning not actual like stocks and shares, we're not a company, but what we call a share in the fund certificate. And I outlined this in the Patreon video a year ago, and then sort of put it off the back of my mind, okay, Dave, at some point you've got to get this ready, you know, just think about it a bit later. And of course, a year went by, bang, like when I blinked, a year went by. So here we are, I'm supposed to now send this share certificate to these few dozen people who have supported us at the top level, and it's not ready yet. But now production is underway, and uh, actually somebody on the stream, I don't know how secret this is, I think it's okay, we don't have to be secret about this. Somebody on the stream a while back offered to help me with some Photoshop work, which I had been struggling with myself. 
and I, it's kind of funny. I, I I sent him the sample mock-up that I was thinking about, along with an original image that we had scooped from from Wikipedia or something. And I explained the trouble I'd been having at cleaning up this image of an old-time share certificate in order to transform it for our use. And I was thinking I could send this to him and maybe, you know, a week later or something, maybe something might be happening and we'll see how it goes. And I send it to him and I go to bed. And I wake up in the morning and whatever, there it is. It's like finished or <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever. It's not absolutely finished, but there it is. And he's done so much work on it in just for him a few minutes, I guess. I don't know, whatever. Or maybe he stayed up all night working at his end. He's here. He may want to post about it and talk about it. It's up to him. I'll leave it at that end, you know. So. <laughs> anyway, it looked really, I was really, really, really happy. It was going so much better. I'd just been trying to copy and paste and stick together layers and a messy job. And it comes back, just looks fantastic. So the, the point of the story is the share certificate is moving along. The Photoshop end of it is now within minutes of being complete. That looks really cool. It looks great. What's not done yet is the share certificate is not just an inkjet printed object, but it also has one section of it that is going to be cut and printed as a wood block. In other words, we're doing the Photoshop background section first, turning it into a, a PDF file or whatever, printing it out commercially. And then those printed sheets will come to my workbench where I will print an image section on top of each of these certificates by hand as a carved and printed section of the image. And that's not done yet. And that's something you're probably going to be seeing here on the Twitch stream in the next few days. This job will be postponed yet again as I deal with something that has suddenly become a higher priority. And it's a high priority, but I haven't decided what to do yet. So somewhere I have to get busy on this. You know. And I spent it yesterday evening, I can't say wasting time, I was going to say wasting time. I spent yesterday evening working on the content for the next David's Choice video, of which I am way, way, way late. So It was an exhausting day yesterday, you know. It was supposed to be a quiet day in the shop. It turned out to be a typhoon in the shop all day. And then in the evening I had to decide between which jobs, you know, the video work or share certificate work or general accounting bookkeeping work or whatever work on the first floor but at least that part of it working on that share certificate now seems to be in capable hands absolutely It looked really good. I was really, really, really pleased. I know he's he's gone things that I hadn't even thought were possible. I know the original sort of we're st we're starting with a copy of some original old time share certificate which had all this steel engraving around the edge. You know, rather than create a thing completely from scratch, and I hunted around for quite a while uh, finding images that one were free copyright to use and that also were high quality and that looked good. I found one, but the share certificate, maybe it had been bound into a book or something, so it was scanned. And on the right-hand side, there was kind of a shadow. It was all darkened on the right hand, one centimeter or so. And I was just giving up. I didn't see any way to fix that. And he has uh, totally, absolutely fixed the lighting. So it looks just like a smooth, clean, even piece of paper. It's wonderful. Way, way better than I could even think of doing so. We'll see. We'll, we'll post soon about it when I get a bit closer. It's, it's, we shouldn't be posting it just yet. So. Or maybe we should. I don't know. What do you think, Photoshop Guru? Should we post the sample that we've got so far? Mrs. Bull's here. Yeah, I chatted with my mom. 
<laughs> of course I chatted with my mom last night. You think I'm going to I didn't get any work done because I had to talk to my mom. That's not what happened. <laughs> so. <laughs> maybe we should post that thing. I don't know. Mr. Photoshop Guru, let's do that. Let's let's maybe do you have a link to that or or do I have a link to it or what do we put it? Let me drop it into let me drop it into a folder. Okay, hang on a sec. I've got a temporary folder I can drop it in. Hang on a sec. Uh, where am I? Excuse the where am I? Patreon share certificate. Sample. Hang on one sec, please. Here we are. The, the URL will be mokohankan.com. It'll be in the folder called temporary. It'll be mokohankan.com slash temporary slash Let's put the name here. Slash share underbar sample. Mokohankan.com slash temporary slash all lowercase share underbar sample dot jpg. I'm being lazy or should I just type that? Okay, I'll do it here. HTTPS nowadays. Mokohankan.com slash temporary slash share oops I think that's it unless I borked it what you're going to see there I know the you're seeing two things. You're seeing a steel engraved old time share certificate, which has been heavily edited wonderfully by by Mr. Koringami here in, in Photoshop. The picture in the oval at the top will change. That's not what you're going to get. That's just a dummy image right now. That's just a dummy. That's going to come out and there will be a new image in that oval thing at the top. And then there's also, we're not finished. There are still some other changes that will be happening here. But this is, this. he's done a fantastic job. The original image, the original share certificate was folded, punched, creased, had all kinds of crap on it. It's just insane. It's just insane what uh, Mr. Kurigami has done here. Maybe it's no big deal for people who know Photoshop very well. I don't know. For me, it's been a spectacular help. I don't have an original here. I've got an original, but it's 99 megabytes large. Just a sec here. Um, it's 30 megabytes. Uh, I don't have anything on my computer here I can use to shrink this down. Whatever. Later. I'll, I'll do that later. I'll show a, a simplified JPEG of the original later. I don't have a simple one I can post right now. So He's done a fabulous job, absolutely family stuff. Yeah, maybe what I can do is I can screenshot that thing. Okay, hang on a sec. Oh shit, I gotta get out of here soon, you know. Okay, let me open this up. Let me take a quick screenshot. Desktop. Open a preview. Export. As a JPEG, hang on a sec, please. Share original JPEG. Where am I? Wait, phone camera, tap from folder. Okay, we'll get this. Hang on a sec, here we are. to be working
Okay, is this it or did I screw it up? Is that it? Did it come up? So here's what this guy can do. It's just fantastic. Just fantastic. I was so happy. I got to wait till the bill comes in. <laughs> And you see on the right hand side, that shadow on the right hand side, that's so cool. I don't know if he flipped stuff from the left to do that. I'm not sure how he did it, but uh, that's the part that was really stymieing me to get that shadow off on the right hand side. I hear a key in the lock downstairs. We are running out of time here. I'm going to have to run in a couple of minutes, you know. It's Kawaii-san coming. He's going to be joined by Kitamura-san, the new young lady. We have a full schedule of parties, and if the shop is anything like what happened yesterday, we are not going to be able to handle it. It's just going to be insane. Or it could be a quiet day. We have no idea. We're still in the middle of Golden Week. Asakusa is booming. And the battery is the battery starting to die? I'm not sure. Somebody mentioned the sound was a bit funny. That, that battery has life of its own. See. He's going up and down the stairs, of course. He's putting out the flag and the posters. You have to look at the weather. If it's going to be a rainy day, we have a rainy day poster which has no pamphlets attached to it. If it's a sunny day, we can put out the poster with pamphlets. The flag goes out, and then we'll be opening the shutter so that people can see the new Mario and, and Fox posters. Maybe I should keep it closed today so we can, can't handle the influx. <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't enough blank paper texture. That's what hurt me when I first tried to do this. There wasn't enough blank paper that you could use for a master to have good clean background. So we're not finished. We're taking out the American bank note at the bottom. It's coming out, so we're still not done. <clears throat> and I've got to decide on what kind of a print to put inside the oval. And I gotta get it carved, gotta get it printed. For doing this, we're going to use what's called Awagami Washi. There's a company here in Japan, Awagama Company. They're making washi, handmade washi, which is usable on inkjet printers. They've got a specific coding and a specific formulation for it, and they're selling it. If you look at Awagami, A-W-A-G-A-M-I, awagami.com, they have all kinds of washi that is beautifully done, and it works super well in inkjet printers. Kai-san, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Wow, look at this briefcase. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's not morning. <laughs> so, it's morning. <laughs> We're just finishing <laughs> off here. Party, mimashita. Party. Juji karagoni and gano kazoku. 
あの、おや二人、あの、十歳、十二歳、プラス、ちび。だから、そう、髪が悪くないから、あの、昨日、テイコさんが一日分の髪を用意したんですが。パリ、二つしか、あ、なんですかね。わかりました。はい、多分、まあ、とりあえず、まあ、そう、午前中のパーティー、そのままやって、お昼の間に、次の。Looks good. 僕はあの、いいとか、はけまで触ってないです。あ,あ、わかんないです。Okay, here's Kawai san. Okay, I have to get going now. It is. We have a huge, huge, huge full schedule today. Are we going to survive? Who knows? There's our. There's our block. <coughs> As you can see, what's left? We've got some waves still to go. Then there's some calligraphy here. It says Katsuka Hokusai Namiura, which is the Japanese word for great wave. And the original doesn't have any text in that space, ne? If we flip back to the original, as we'll see, the original has text up in the corner and nothing in the open space. Why are we doing this? Are we taking too many liberties with the original? We need to fill that space. If we have an open space here, when people are printing, the paper goes on top, they can't see it, and they will smash into this space. We need to fill it with something so that they can print smoothly. So we just put the guy's name in Katsuko Hokusai Namiura. It's still a little bit Open here, but I can't really put birds in there. We'll just have to take our chances. We'll teach people as they go print the wave first, then print the calligraphy, then print the circle. How is it going to work? We don't know. We'll find out once it goes into production, which will be some weeks away for sure. Okay, I got to get out of here. I'm sorry, I forgot again. Fridge is still upstairs on the dosa table. I meant to bring it down. I was chatting with my mother about that the other day, yesterday. I forgot to bring Fridge down here. So, well, sorry about that. He's lonely upstairs. Okay, I gotta go. Thank you very much, guys. Good stream. Sounds like fun today. I didn't read it all. I'll try and catch it later tonight if I can possibly manage to it. Oops. Don't know where that was. Thanks again. See you tomorrow. Where am I here? Hi, camera off. Look at these notifications, notifications. All right, thanks again, guys. See you next time. Goodbye. See you then.